Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 20th. I don't know how it got to be November, let alone how it got to be November 20th. It's cold. 19 degrees when I got up this morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, high today is only going to be about 36. It's cold. We're apparently just skipping through fall and give you an idea how cold it is. This morning, I thought about breaking out some Latakia. Yeah, it's cold. I might, I might do that for Thanksgiving. I haven't decided yet, but uh, it's about time for my annual Latakia binge. Last me somewhere between a week and a month, usually. We'll see. Ah, got the. Uh, Mr. Winslow, thank you, Jerry. Enjoying some haunted bookshop this morning. Still on my two pipes a day uh, regimen. Uh, to be honest, sometimes it's three. But in most most of the time, too, I'm probably averaging, you know, two point something, but uh, occasionally three. Most of the time, too. Just trying to keep my dentist happy. And I'm choosing, which might be completely opposed to the whole goal, but I'm choosing large ball pipes um, because they last longer. So. so Thanksgiving, this Thursday is Thanksgiving. So uh, I'm not going to be cheesy and talk about all the things I'm thankful for. Mostly because I usually share them with you as, I'm, as they occur or as I'm thinking about them. And uh, you know I'm thankful for lots of stuff. Got a, got a great life. And, uh, you know, even in the darkest of times, we, we have things to be thankful for. Worth, worth thinking about that now so that when those dark times come upon us, we, uh, we know what we're thankful for. So I guess that's one good thing about Thanksgiving. So once a year, come what may, we take a moment, sometimes more than a moment, to uh, just sort of catalog our lives and realize how good we actually have it. I learned over the, uh, the past couple of weeks with uh, my dad's illness and ultimately his passing that I have a great deal to be thankful for not not just in terms of and, and certainly in terms of uh, the life that he gave me the time that I got to spend with him the things that we shared even the times when we kind of butted heads and stuff you know we we I grew I, I like to think that he grew in, in those moments um, not, not saying I was right necessarily but yeah. We always learn from conflict, whether we're right or wrong in our stance. But also this experience has, has made me, you know, very thankful for just the support of people, uh, family, friends, uh, all of you. You know, it got, it got to the point where, you know, the, the first couple of days after my dad passing, I I just couldn't keep up with all the, the text messages and the instant messages and the direct messages and the, the emails and the phone calls. And it just, it was it was overwhelming. And I mean that in a, in a very good, positive way. And it provided a much needed distraction from where my mind would otherwise have been going. Yeah, I'm thankful for that. Thankful for you folks. Thankful for YouTube. Ugh. <laughs> With all the ads and stuff, you know, it's hard to say that, but yeah, I am. Brings us together. Gives us gives us somebody to share a pipe with. And uh, and that's a good thing.
So this Thanksgiving is going to be a bit non-traditional, as you might have noticed from the thumbnail there. And uh, by the way, uh, the, the estate of Charles Schultz is going to sue me someday. That's no, okay. They can have whatever they want. Because they gave me Snoopy. No, I, I don't know what the uh, what the laws are on that, but I, I just I just love the peanuts so much I can't resist sticking them in there. And I guess the worst that'll happen is there'll be a copyright strike and they'll take the video down. But that's never actually happened for an image that I'm aware of. At least for me, it's never happened. So yes, non-traditional Thanksgiving. Um, my wife is in Pittsburgh. I think I told the story. I get confused between what happens on live streams and what happens on these videos. But uh, my wife's mom fell and broke her arm, wrist, something broke, and she's got a cast. And since my father-in-law, my, my wife's dad, is kind of dependent on my mother-in-law, for a lot of things, somebody has to be there to help them. And it's my wife's turn. You know, she's got two sisters and they've been rotating and uh, just because of work and other obligations, this was the time when she was most needed. And so she's there and I'm here and I've got an invitation to go there, but I don't want to have to deal with kenneling the dogs and all that stuff and then driving six hours and eh, I'm just gonna stay here. I'm just going to have a nice, simple Thanksgiving with my, yeah, throw my tamper on the floor. That's okay, I've got more. Um, with my dogs. And I'm looking forward to it. I really am. The question is, what am I going to have for dinner? And that's why I've got that famous uh, Snoopy preparing the Thanksgiving dinner thing on the, on the front. I, I love that. And by the way, apparently they are showing them on, I think, ABC this year. Could be wrong about that, but I, I think that's true. They are showing the peanut holiday specials. Uh, miss those. Popcorn and buttered toast for Thanksgiving dinner. Snoopy to the rescue. So, yeah, I'm not going to have popcorn and buttered toast, but I am thinking about non-traditional, non-turkey, because I'm not going to make a turkey for myself and two dogs. They would like it, but... And I could, you know, get a turkey breast, or my buddy Tim recommended a chicken. That's what he's doing. Eh, I don't like chicken that much. I don't like turkey that much. And I was thinking of maybe making something I enjoy that my wife doesn't. So she, I like uh, pork and sauerkraut, and she doesn't like sauerkraut at all. So I thought maybe I can make that. But that's work. I don't know if I want to do work. And I don't want to be one of these sad people that gets like Chinese takeout on Thanksgiving. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Sorry, if you're doing that, it's not sad. It's it would make me sad, <laughs> but it's it's not sad for you. Um, uh, you know, my my Italian blood is is it's not it's not the majority of what I am, but it does run strong, and I'm thinking it might be a pasta kind of. Italian Thanksgiving. One of my favorite things to cook is uh, is spaghetti sauce with with meatballs and sausage, uh, and I like to make it a bit spicy, which my wife doesn't like, and she's gluten free, so she can't really eat the pasta and everything. So this would be a great opportunity for me to enjoy it, and at the same time, I know how to make it, and I enjoy making it, and. Uh, it's relatively simple, you know, you don't have to have 500 pots and six ovens. And four ovens, I don't, I don't know how you do Thanksgiving, but when I do it, I need four ovens. No, I don't need four ovens. So 
So yeah, we might have a very Italian Thanksgiving. I'll let you know. <laughs> so what are you all doing? Are you, you doing the traditional route? Anybody doing something non-traditional? Let me know. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, Eight o'clock coffee. Hmm. I have a coffee debacle to tell you about. I, so I order eight o'clock coffee directly from eight o'clock uh, because I like to get the whole bean 50-50. So it's 50% decaf, 50% original, and it's whole bean that I grind in my, my coffee grinder. And they had a big sale a month or two ago, and I you know, usually I buy, what's, I think they're 32 ounce bags, and I buy four of them. And if I do that, I get free shipping and usually I can time it so that there's like a 15 to 20 percent off sale so I wind up basically getting one of the bags for free after all is said and done so so that's that's great so the sale came uh, and I was on my last bag and I said oh boy better better jump on this sorry replacement tamper and I it turned out they didn't have any of the 50-50 in stock. And I said, well, that's okay. I can make my own. So I'll just get, you know, half regular and half decaf, and I'll mix the beans together before I put them in the grinder. So I was very proud of myself for finding that. Uh, it was a little odd because I couldn't get the 32-ounce bags of one of them. I could get 32 ounce bags of whole bean decaf, but not regular or vice versa. I don't remember which. So I had to go with 16 ounce bags. Anyway, it all it all averaged out properly, and I was still getting a pretty good deal and all that. And I, and the order arrived, and I I foolishly ordered one of them in ground and the other one in whole bean. I don't know. I just clicked the wrong thing. I I went and I checked the the order, and that's what I did. It was my fault. So. So I got to live with this, and I thought, well, how am I going to do this? So, well, I got to, since I've got 32 ounces versus 16 ounces, I'm going to basically have to grind. Yeah, it was the, it, it, whatever, the, the whole bean is the 32 ounce. So I got to grind 32 ounces of whole bean coffee and combine it with two 16 ounce bags of ground coffee and mix everything up thoroughly and then part it back out into bags. And so that's, that's what I did. And, you know, it's just not the same. <laughs> it just doesn't taste the same. It's still good coffee, and I'm enjoying it, but eh, look forward to getting through this batch. I won't do that again. I've thought about going back to high test, just you know, the straight regular coffee, but I drink the entire pot by myself, and I don't know, I just don't need that much caffeine, so I'll cut it in half and be happy. Anyway, what's going on here? So today, I got to work today, I got, I got paperwork I got to do, it's year-end review nonsense going on, and I got to get ready for that. Uh, I've got a meeting on Monday. Uh, tomorrow where I have to present and discuss some of this stuff so I got to get all the paperwork together today It'll probably take me about two hours and then I'm probably gonna spend a little bit of time down here in the shop probably just tidying up a bit uh, the kraut cutter cabbage cutter that I'm working on is coming along nicely had a bit of a setback yesterday where I had glued up something incorrectly so I had to unglue it which basically meant destroying part of it, remake the part, and, and glue it back up again. So that's that's coming along nicely, uh, slowly but surely. We'll have it done by, uh, I was trying to have it done by Thanksgiving and thinking I could drive out to Pittsburgh and give it to my in-laws, but I'm not going to do that, so there's no rush. As long as I can get it to them before Christmas, they'll be happy. Um... And beyond that, I gotta get back to building my little chest of drawers and uh, get my sharpening and 
sanding stuff organized and uh, move on with life. So yeah, it's good good times, good times down here in the shop. I'm 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 enjoying getting back into woodworking. Uh, I've been playing with sharpening, been playing with some chisels, uh, some some re refurbishing some old chisels. I've got a. I, I showed. I, I don't know if you can see it from your angle. Yeah, I got all these chisels back here. Th these are things that I've had for years. I I haven't gone on a buying binge or anything. And they've just been sitting in a box uh, waiting for me to do something with them. And so I'm starting to refurbish some of those. And some of them are lousy, like, uh, you know, these. That's not the lousiest of them, wait a minute. Oh, darn it. I had one that was really... Well, I'm not going to be able to find it right now. But this is a Stanley, um, Stanley Handyman. And, you know, the steel on these is pretty lousy. Um, this is probably Craftsman. That's a Craftsman. You know, these, these are not going to be good for fine woodworking. You're not going to do dovetails with these, but... Uh, they're they're good to have around, you know. You can scrape glue lines with them, or you know, if you got some heavy mortar chopping to do, you might want to use them to you know clean off, knock stuff off, that kind of thing. They're not terrible, but they're not great. Uh, and then I've also got some of these guys, and I'm very excited about these. I've, I've been wanting to restore these for a while and and try to get a set of them. This is a Stanley 750. Um, and these are the, the uh, yeah, what do they call this? Socket tools. So the thing goes on there, and you, I, I can knock it right now. But so I've got uh, three quarters, half, and quarter inch version of the Stanley 750. And I want to, I'm going to eventually try to build a full set of those. So if you ever see any Stanley 750s while you're out and about. It's got to actually have the number 750 on the on the socket right up here. Um, grab them for me. I'll pay you. Probably shouldn't have said that. I'm going to have like 600 Stanley 750s. I'll have to take out a loan to pay you off. But yeah. I need the big ones. One inch and up. How's that? <laughs> No, it's the part of the fun is just going to auctions and flea markets and all those sorts of things and trying to trying to complete the set. So, well, folks, I have been babbling now. Uh, I'm not going to do anything outside today because it's cold. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> with that, folks, I'm going to let you get back to your Sundays. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today and uh, for listening to me babble on. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving and. Uh, yeah, spend it with folks you love, spend it doing things you love, um, and be thankful because we've got a lot to be thankful for. Uh, and I'm thankful for you, and I hope in some small way uh, I can provide, I've been able to provide something that you're thankful for. So with that, folks, you all take care, and until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.